بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد أيها الحبة في الله. The seventh condition of the shahada is love, and that is that the believer loves the shahada. He loves uh, in accordance with the shahada. He loves the implications or requirements of the shahada, meaning he loves Islam. This is al wala wal bara, loving for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa taala, and that a person makes this shahada. Uh, and loves what it stands for. The person who doesn't do this, their faith is is incomplete. This is why it's imperative to, in order to be a, a full believer, uh, have camel iman, to strive to have camel iman is leaving off sinfulness and loving the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, fi kitab al kareem, wa min al nasi may yattakhidu min duni Allahi and dad and yuhibbunahum ka hubbillah, walladina amanu ashaddu hubbin lillah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, fi kitab al kareem, yet of mankind are some who take unto themselves objects of worship which they set as rivals to Allah loving them with a love like that which is due to Allah alone however those who believe are stauncher in their love of Allah that's the difference between the mu'min and the one who loves this dunya and loves the things and 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 of, of this dunya maybe love sinfulness they love their sinfulness more than they love worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is very dangerous Allah, to not let this dunya deceive you the prophet sallallahu said a dunya sijinu mu'min jannatul kafir that this life that it is a prison of the believer and it is the paradise of the disbeliever because they're getting what they want here this is all they all they got so if they struggled in this life and didn't at least get the fame and the wealth and the women and the, all the things that they wanted for their desires and they lost in this life and they lose in the hereafter. That is one of the khasirun, khalis. And even and and the one who got some of that fame, some of that fortune, some of those things that will appeal to their desires in this life, and they didn't believe, they just got a little tiny piece. This was their jannah. But in the hereafter, a shaddil adab, they'll have a a wicked torment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitab al kareem say if your fathers or your sons or your brethren or your wives or your tribe or the wealth you have acquired or merchandise for which you fear that there will be no sale or dwellings you desire or are dearer to you than Allah and his messenger and striving in his way then wait till Allah brings his command to pass Allah guides not wrongdoing folk la ya Wallahu la yahdi qawm al fasiqeen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't guide those people who desire fisk, who desire sinfulness, and choose that over worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And may Allah protect us from being misguided, I mean. The Prophet sallallahu said, whoever has three characteristics has tasted the sweetness of faith, the sweetness of Iman. The first of these is that he loves Allah and his messenger more than he loves anyone else. That's the first one. It's, it's, it's loving Allah. Love your Lord. Love to come back to your Lord. Make tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Come closer to Allah. And strive to get the love of Allah. Because the, as the ulama say, Al-Ibra, it's not loving Allah. The purpose is not loving Allah. But it's to be loved by Allah. That's the, that's the point. You have some extreme groups and sects. They say, I love Allah. And that they, that they only strive to increase their love. And this is beautiful, to increase your love for Allah. But they believe that that's the end result. In fact, what we want is to gain the love of Allah. That only comes by adhering to Kitab wa Sunnah. You cannot be a wicked fasik and a, a mubtadi'ah, doing all kind of innovation in Allah's religion, worshipping the grave, crying because you see a picture of your shaykh, uh, worshipping your shaykh, pulling out the najas of your shaykh and eating it. All of these things, going to the graves and worshipping them, making dua to the dead and whatever, seeking refuge in the dead and the living. And think that you're going to gain the love of Allah. That's that's not the way to gain the Allah's love. It's by adhering to Kitab wa Sunnah. And the Prophet sallallahu he sallallahu alaihi wasallam, had a Sunnah for us to follow. So when we depart from the Sunnah, how can you expect to gain the love of Allah? The love of Allah comes from following. You're not going to be loved by Allah more than the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and all the Anbiya 
alayhim after the salatu was salam, they were the best. And the Sahaba to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een, they were the best of this ummah, of this nation. So by adhering to the madhab of the salaf is how we gain the love of Allah. But that means you're going to be persecuted. That means people are not going to like you. It means people are going to say, those Salafis, those Wahhabis, those this, those Irhabis, they're making all kind of Al-Qab, all kind of names, falsifying, trying to falsify the Dawah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because Salafiyya just means that you're striving to follow Quran and Sunnah and the message and the, 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 the Madhab of the Salaf of this Ummah. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, thumma ladina yulunum, thumma ladina yulunum. The best people is my uh, people of my generation, then those who follow them, then those who follow them. How can you gain the love of Allah if you don't follow those first three generations? You don't follow the Madhab the Salaf. The Prophet said, Alaykum bi sunnati wa sunnati wa khulafa al-Rashidin al-Mahdiin. It's upon you my sunnah and the sunnah of the khulafa al-Rashidin al-Mahdiin. It's upon you my sunnah and the sunnah of the rightly guided Khalifat. Abu Bakr, uh, Umar, Uthman, wa Ali, radiyallahu ta'ala amin ajma'een. How can you have the love of Allah if you don't love the Sahaba? How can you have love, the, gain the love of Allah and, and express that you even love Allah and you don't want to follow His commandments when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised the companions in the Qur'an? They compiled the Qur'an. They protected the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa They were there when revelation was being revealed. How is it you can gain the law, the, the love of Allah, and how is it you can claim that you love Allah Without those, without loving the companions, by cursing the companions, disrespecting the companions, hating the companions, accusing them of all kind of evil wickedness and treachery, what kind of love of Allah are you going to gain? You'll gain the curse of Allah. The Prophet said, La tusubu ashabi. Don't curse my companions. We want the love of Allah. We have to do those things to gain Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's love. And with regards to that muhabba, ayu al-ahabba, that this is something uh, that we have to strive to, to gain. And along with this, uh, we also, some of the ulama, they say also uh, that a part of that, uh, a part of uh, the conditions for the testimony of faith is that a person uh, denies other all other deities and this is kind of implied in in the others but some of them they say it's an eighth condition and they say that a person must deny any other act uh, object of worship and we've already talked about that and that really comes in a class and it comes but some some of the ulama they distinguish and they use this and they say uh, as evidence and this is uh, of course, the haq. They say, فَمَنْ يَكْفُرْ بِالْتَغُوءُ وَيُؤْمِنْ بِاللَّهِ فَقَدْ اسْتَمْسَكَ بِالْعُرْوَةِ الْوُثْقَى لَا انْفِسَامْ لَا انْفِسَامَ لَهَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah, Fi Kitab Al-Kareem, And he who rejects false deities and believes in Allah and has grasped a firm handhold which will never break. So holding on to the rope of, the, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Kitab Al-Sunnah, Denying all ta'gut, anything that's worshipped besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, anything that is pleased with being worshipped besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that means if you have a shaykh, you respect this person, you love your shaykh, but if your shaykh wants you to have his picture, to cry, to think about him in, 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 in the absence, in, in his absence, uh, and is pleased with this, this is very dangerous, then you have to call in, you're going to be called to an account for that. Has it gone to a, per, have you went, reached to a point of worship? Because your worship is to Allah. Your worship is only to Allah. If you're ruling by other than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed, this is great danger. This is a type of kufr. So you want to come back in your rulership to kitab wa sunnah and the understanding of the salaf of this ummah. All of these are forms of tawaghit, as uh, Imam Ibn al-Qayyum mentioned. So a habitifillah, be very cautious. And the Prophet sallallahu said, Whoever says that there is no one worthy of worship except Allah and it denies whatever is worship besides Allah, then his wealth and blood are protected and his account 
or his reckoning will be with a law. That's a part of the Shahada. That's the testimony of faith. That all of your worship is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that you continue on your worship and love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you have to have ilm. You have to have knowledge. You have to have certainty. You have to have sincerity. You have to have love. And you have to uh, accept it. And you have to uh, 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 not ascribe any partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in worship. And may Allah bless us with عَلْنَ النَّافِرِ رَسْكَنْ طَيْبُ وَعَمْلَ الْمُتَقَبِّلِ Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jal. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless the translator, uh, you know, the one who compiled this treaties of conditions of La ilaha illallah and his work in putting that together. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon Shaykh Allama Muhammad Amman Jami and all of our ulama who have deceased and those who are living wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam